Ladies and gentlemen, it's Napalm Dawn here on G4G. So I wanted to get through a couple of Marvel's Avengers updates with you guys. So first off, the War for Wakanda DLC, which will be free, is coming out in a measly couple weeks, August 17th. We're going to see War for Wakanda added to Marvel's Avengers. And man, um, it, it might actually work. It might have a shot at getting some people back into the game. Over on Reddit, people have been tracking the Steam count for the PC version of the game as it is currently going through a free weekend that started yesterday, 7.29. The date, not a time. 7.29, the date. So, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time on July 29th. We had a free weekend for those who already have the game. We're getting a bunch of boosts and XP things and everything. And it has driven the Steam count up from 2 to 3 to 4 and maybe even close to 5,000 now. So this weekend seems to be doing pretty well. I maybe would have placed it one or two weekends closer um to war for wakanda let's see 17th yeah maybe the first weekend in august would have been a little better since you're getting people in the game so close to the hype moment but okay hey 5,000 people playing on the pc version is really good so that's one thing that you got over there is war for wakanda is coming up pretty closely the second thing is that we have a free weekend going on with a boost weekend if you're an active Marvel's Avengers player. And then finally, in the actual game itself, we have the MCU Thor skin. This is the one that um, people were really kind of holding out for, wondering if it was going to be decent or not. This is the one that people thought might be the hardest. It's the one that people maybe had the most hope and hype for after Captain America's was pretty good and suffice to say it's pretty solid but in typical Crystal Dynamics fashion it is not without its issues. I love the cloak. I love the black. I love how the black looks on him and the texture that it implies. Now this is streaming from my Xbox One to my PC so it's even better when you see it more directly in person rather than sort of third party the way you're seeing it now. There are issues. Some people have had cloak issues. Um, I really like his cloak. Uh, I've seen pictures on Reddit of it shifted all the way to like the left shoulder and being weird. And this is the game's Mjolnir or Mew Mew as a uh, cat happened to say uh yeah this is the game's mjolnir not the mcu one this is something and i'm going to get to something i'm not really concerned about in a moment but this does concern me a little bit that they changed cap's shield to have the proper shield and thank god they did because i fucking hate cap's shield in this game and the fact that it never changes but they could have gone with MC's Mjolnir, which I believe is completely solid on the top. It does not have that sort of giant, like, hilt screw up there. But, uh, I mean, the black is really, really solid. The arms and the patterning of the metal on the arms, I think, is good. Pants still look... Their pant textures are a little weird. It kind of reminds me of parachute pants when I was in fifth grade and that was a big thing like when Alfonso Ribeiro was doing Michael Jackson impressions uh, but overall really solid however people do have a complaint over the fact that his black um, plates on the chest armor do not light up when he does electrical attacks it doesn't spark so that's a bit of an issue uh, it is 1400 credits, which means if you're completely broke, it's 1900 credits, which means it's 20 bucks in order to get it. But, you know, MCU stuff, I figured I should get. We do have a bundle for Iron Man that gives you um, his endgame 
outfit. And it also seems to have um, an emote and a nameplate. This nameplate is, I just, yeah, it, it's weird. Um, thanks for the free item there, guys. This nameplate that looks like the Walking Dead Thor, gray and emaciated and just horrible. We have an outfit bundle that gives us a few different items over here. So we have Black Widow Outrider, which I think is pretty solid. The glasses are cool. Um, Iron Man Retro. This is the faceplate on him that reminds me of um, the guy from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles who wore the hockey mask. I remembered what it was yesterday when I first filmed this video, and I'm forgetting now. Crap. Yeah, I forgot that guy. Casey? Maybe Casey was his name. Um, Captain America Rebirth. So, interestingly enough, Iron Man is a legendary. Black Widow is a legendary. Cap comes in with just an epic. Um, kind of has this, like, Channing Tatum, G.I. Joe look to it. It's okay. Don't like it that much. Uh, Jerry Garcia Hawkeye. I think this one is cool. If it actually pops up. This one, I... Yeah, it's so different and so off the wall. I really do like it. But I've got some good ones for Hawkeye, so I wouldn't use it. But yeah, Jerry Garcia is cool. This one makes him look like he should be cast in Space Jam. Um, they call it the wrestling one. It just seems like Space Jam to me. I can sort of see it being basketball if you look at the waist up. Um, but then you see it's it's a one piece, so yeah, it does seem wrestling-ish. Miss Marvel Cariachi. Um, very weird tablecloth looking shirt pattern. And her belt looks like a streamer that goes up in a gymnasium when you're like, happy homecoming, everybody. And Young Thor, which I think is pretty cool. But for some reason, his hair and his face just kind of remind me of, like, Black Widow. I, I don't know why. Um, and then Kate Bishop Dimension Shift, which I own, but I don't use. I use the one with the, the holes on the, the side. So that's what we've got active in the store now, along with uh, Crash Test Black Widow, Crash Test Cat, which actually kind of looks cool. Um... We have a Tropical Hulk, which is cool, but the shirt is so ripped up. I think it kind of loses some of its effect, but he's got flip-flops. He's got a lay around his neck. I'd like to probably see actually some more shirt, to be honest, just to add to the uh, effect a little bit. So the Crash Test outfit set is what's been going on lately. Uh, Kamala's, I think, is pretty cool that Thor is decent and high it just okay just flipped by itself there uh Kate's is okay and Iron Man's is made to look like a crash test dummy again looks like Robin Williams Millennial Man or Bicentennial Man I keep forgetting the name of that uh here is my current cast Fear Itself Black Widow Aronin Hawkeye MCU Cap Maestro Hulk because I hate MCU Hulk um, das Vidanya, Kamala, MCU Thor, my favorite Kate outfit, and then MCU Iron Man. So clearly that's, yeah, that's a little bit of money there. Omega level threat family reunion comes back. People are not too thrilled about this mode. Um, it's, it's been problematic for people. They said it's just dumb hard it's not like planning hard or skill hard just dumb hard when six things are shooting you at once three things are tracking you and another three things are just straight up AOEing where you are it had loot issues for a bit Mega Hives is gaining ground with a lot of people uh, Mega Hives is actually one of the areas where people are saying the game's done well Temporal Salt is in effect where you can have multiple of a character and I will go ahead and show you guys uh, MCU Thor directly. So here's, I, I said, uh, you know, a few minutes ago, there's one thing a lot of people complain about that I'm not. 
And to be honest, that is the fact that Stormbreaker is not part of MCU Thor. The kind of semi-rolling consensus is that it should have been Stormbreaker because it's Endgame Thor. And that, truthfully, Mjolnir didn't exist at that time because Thor had to age five years, uh, get a little bit zoftic around the waist, and summon Mjolnir when he went back in time. So Mjolnir wasn't around then. It had been destroyed by Hela at that point. So why is it there? Guys, look. Stormbreaker is a major difference that they have not done for anything else. If they couldn't get Black Widow's guns right, if they couldn't get Hawkeye's bow and arrow right, and his arrows, and the way that he held the bow, and they can only really get the shield right, which is the most minimal of things, what did you honestly think they were going to do with Stormbreaker? Stormbreaker is a two-handed axe. It is not a one-handed weapon. You cannot do Mjolnir's moves as Stormbreaker. It, it, it just can't happen. And for them to have gone so far to have changed that, um, I, I think would have been a little bit of a ridiculous expectation. I knew we weren't going to get Stormbreaker. I was not upset that we were not going to get Stormbreaker. It's one of those things that I accept. It's like, if you have a one in a million chance to win a lottery and you buy one paltry card for 10 bucks, you pretty much are just going to sit there until you see the numbers, guaranteeing yourself you're not going to win the lottery. Would it be nice? Absolutely. But are you going to be unrealistic? And think that that one ten dollar scratch off card with a one in a million chance is actually really going to win you a million dollars. That's pretty much how I approached this Thor. Now some people were saying, "Oh, they, you know, his ultimate really would have been weird to do if he had Stormbreaker." I disagree. His ultimate, ultimate. I mean, you're up in the air. You're summoning the Bifrost. That one actually makes one of the most senses to be using Stormbreaker. But his God Blast would not work if he had Stormbreaker. He aims the gun straight forward, almost in like a shield pose. So that's not going to work. And Stormbreaker's hilt is too big. You can't do this move right here. Like, how are you going to do that with Stormbreaker? you would have a completely redesigned character. That move would change a little bit based on where the grip on the hilt was. I, I mean, uh, flying up in like this spin right here, he's doing it by the lanyard. He's doing it by the rope. How is he going to do that with Stormbreaker, which doesn't have it? Uh, I mean, and that move. That goes top of the hammer first. What good would it be to throw an axe top first instead of blade first? Um, so yeah, it was an unrealistic expectation. I think people who were upset that they didn't get Stormbreaker just really didn't think hard enough and lack critical thinking skills to think that we would have gotten um stormbreaker in this i mean it just should have been a complete given that we were not going to get it i mean it would have been nice sure but i think it's too much to ask of crystal and square who couldn't even get black widow's guns to be small in her hand when she unholstered them to get rid of the color of the tip of Hawkeye's arrows, um, you know, the feather part, to make him shoot with the right hand. And every animation in the game has him shooting one way, but then he's supposed to shoot another way because he's MCU. And he had the, the shaved head and just, like, you should have known. You really, really should have known. And honestly, be glad with what we got when it comes to Thor. The little nuances, like fixing the hammer to be the MCU hammer, like getting the lightning to bounce off of the uh, chest plates 
the chest discs. Yeah, that's that's definitely something that you can be upset about and should be mad about. I kind of think the mouth area of his head doesn't sort of fit the movie haircut. I mean, he just... That's just a weird pose. It, it is very Uncanny Valley. It is very, very pod people-ish. But hey, I think the rest of the skin is good. Just fix Mjolnir, make the lightning bounce off of the disc plates or the chest plates over there or the you know chest discs and i think you've got a real winner over there but i'm probably gonna say captain cap comes in at a good nine out of ten for the skins thor comes in at about a seven and a half maybe an eight and then it's everything else i i think hulk kind of sits in a weird middle spot of five and then black widow and hawkeye are just down at like two um, they're, uh, and the Black Widow one is just really bad. Iron Man, I actually think Iron Man probably comes in closer to Caps, maybe like an eight and a half. Um, cause that one's just easier to completely change over to the MCU. Thor, I mean, it's, uh, it's the game's head on MCU Thor body and everything. It, they dressed him right, you know, they, they raided his, his wardrobe when he was on set and they got a spare costume. But obviously they just couldn't get all the stuff stolen from the proc closet on set. Um, and the face is a little weird, but you know, they tried and we're done. All the MCU skins are out there, so enjoy the free weekend, enjoy the mega highs that are actually doing good, and let's hope the player count stays good going into War for Wakanda in a couple weeks, and I'll be covering that then. Thanks for checking out the video, everybody. Have a good one.